Hello, I'm Paul Callan and this is Motor Zen News. You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. Stellantis. Stellantis is a name you might have heard about, and I'm gonna try and get this right. Stellantis is Peugeot, Citroen, DS, Opel, Vauxhall, Fiat, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, a Barth, Lancia, Maserati and Alfa. 14 brands, that's what Stellantis is. Uh, Peugeot, Citroen, PSA Group bought out Opel Vauxhall and then they bought out uh, FCA um, Fiat Chrysler and that altogether ends up with 14 brands, the fourth, the fourth biggest man, uh, manufacturer of cars in the world. The big boss at that company is a guy called uh, Carlos Tavares and this week he's come out and the words he's used, he said, the brutality of the EU ban. The brutality, that's the words he used. The brutality of the EU ban of internal combustion engines by 2035. He says there's better ways to reduce carbon. He's saying that hybrid vehicles are a better way to go because they're cheaper for the con consumer to buy and they're easier for the manufacturer to, to put together and manufacture and, and less cost restraint and less less valuable resources going into those vehicles. He's saying it takes 43,000 miles in an EV vehicle to compensate for the carbon footprint of that vehicle. So what's interesting about this is that this is this is a guy from the fourth, this, this is the boss man from the fourth largest car manufacturer in the world and he's describing the EU ban as, as brutality. So it just goes to prove that the whole argument as to what form of energy we're going to use for combustion going forward um, is not completely agreed upon just yet when you see a big player like that come out. Mercedes-Benz, Mercedes-Benz have what they call a retail group, Mercedes-Benz retail group in UK and they've got 1,200 workers in that group. Um, they've got 10 sites, so 10 individual dealerships and there's 185 of those workers that are part of the Unite Union and at Christmas, the Mercedes, the Mercedes Retail Group came along and said, we want to give you 1.5% pay rise. Well, those 185 workers that are in Unite Union came together and they ended up getting a deal where they get 500 pounds of a lump sum and a 10% rise in their basic pay. So, a hell of a difference there between 1.5% and the 10% plus 500 that they ended up with. Another story from Mercedes-Benz, a technical story. Uh, customer in the UK again has a eight-year-old E-Class hybrid and he bought the car four years ago. He gave £27,000 for four years ago. He went to his Mercedes dealer because the vehicle wasn't going into the hybrid phase anymore. The Mercedes dealer said, yes, we can fix your car, Mr. Customer. Um, £15,000 for a new battery and um, £200 per hour for any labour on cord also. So, kind of makes it uneconomical to fix this car. And we've seen this, I've seen this at one or two workshops in Ireland who've had these vehicles in where the hybrid battery has uh, no longer operating and the vehicle won't go into hybrid. And uh, really, guys are left high and dry with them. It's, it's a f phenomenal amount of money. And my read on this is that I think that some of these early hybrids were premature. I think uh, after Dieselgate, many of these manufacturers reacted. They said they needed had, had to get something out there that was hybrid, stroke electric, and they ended up uh, going off half cocked. And I think some of these early hybrids are in that category. Like this is a phenomenal amount of money. And effectively, if you want to look at this from an environmental point of view, uh, this thing is almost scrap now at this stage. So at eight years old, you're almost seeing a car scrap. Not very good for the environment, that one. Porsche in America, Porsche in America with their Taycan are trying to prove that they're better than Tesla most of the time. And one of the ways they're doing this and trying to have Guinness World Records. One more record, one Guinness World Record they've gone for and one recently is coast to coast. So LA to New York, 2,835 miles. 
um, and the total charge time in a Porsche Taycan to travel 2,835 miles was 2.5 hours. So really fighting hard to get rid of range anxiety here. Um, their first stop at a 350 kilowatt charger, well, the car state of charge was at 6% and within 22 minutes it was at 82%. Another interesting one is the test that, that the Porsche Taycan also holds the record for the longest drift in the Guinness Book of Records. So I think that we could have a couple of Irish contenders for that one. I think once the drift fraternity started putting in uh, electric motors, I think someone here in Ireland could go for that record. Renault, Nissan and Mitsubishi, they're creating an alliance. Well, we always know there was a relationship with Renault and Nissan, but Mitsubishi is now mixed up in that alliance and they're saying that they're going to produce 35 EV vehicles by 2030. Um, as far as we can work out, Renault are saying that there's, there, there's, it's not a merger, there's no need for a merger. Renault are, have not merged with Nissan and the, the, uh, Mitsubishi are standalone in this as well. It's just an alliance where they're coming together to share technology. As far as we can work out that Mitsubishi is going to continue to stay on the U European market. I think we're aware of Mitsubishi dealers here being no more. Um, but what we're find finding coming back is that Mitsubishi is going to remain in Europe. But they're, they're not going to exist in the UK or Irish market. So they're not producing right-hand drive models for the UK and Irish market. The brand of Scheffler, which... Uh, has been heavily, heavily associated with electric and electric vehicles, massive sponsor of Formula E and involved with the development of Formula E and all things to do with electric. Interesting that they are now involved with something to do with hydrogen, but it's nothing to do with uh, using it or the vehicle that's going to be used in or the vehicle technology. One of the biggest problems with hydrogen from what I can understand is transportation using it. Safe use of hydrogen is a huge problem. Hydrogen can really needs to be transported either at very high pressure as a gas or very or extremely low temperatures as a liquid. Now both of these forms of transport are very very expensive. Expensive to handle the, all the equipment, all the piping. Go so far as that when you build a hydrogen service station it's it's all high pressure gas. So everything you do, all your couplings, all your pipe work, all your infrastructure is very, very robust. Uh, all sorts of precautions has to be taken when, you, when working with hydrogen in these environments. So the cost of all the infrastructure for hydrogen is one of the reasons that we haven't immediately adopted hydrogen. But what Scheffler have come up with now is a, a, format, a format for transporting uh, hydrogen and it's called liquid organic hydrogen carrier and I don't fully understand how it works but all they seem to establish is that you don't need to transport it as a very high pressure gas and you don't need to transport it as an extremely cold liquid so this means that uh, the movement of it and the cost of moving it comes down and the cost of setting up infrastructure i.e. service stations will come down considerably as a result of this so another possible form of propulsion now thrown in the mix again and, as, and hydrogen has never left it but as we keep saying on the show there's just all this stuff going on about different ways that we're going to drive vehicles or power vehicles in the years ahead from may 2022 you're going to need an operator's license to run an lcv but relax that as far as we can work out only means that if you have a van over two and a half ton and you go into Europe with higher a reward on that van you need an operator's license but if you operate that van in Ireland you don't need an operator's license so I do know a few people that do the likes of a run to Germany with a sprinter at the weekend um, those guys look like they may come under this new regulation which requires them to have an operator's license from May 2022 but as far as a van operating and existing on the island of Ireland this doesn't apply. Auto Trade Expo, the big trade show that we're all looking forward to, uh, has just been moved. It's It's gone for a new date. It was going to be, be happening in City West in May. They've now moved it out to October 
22nd and 23rd of October. I think that's the original date. I think it always used to occur uh, that time of the year anyway. Um, I think it's the, 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 the word we're getting is that they've done a survey of exhibitors and they've done a survey of potential customers that will be coming to it. And the word they're getting back was that they're the exhibitors and the, the audience that would come are a little bit concerned still about coming to a gathering of people in, in an enclosed building just yet. So they're saying to be safe, they're going to run in October, at which point hopefully these concerns won't exist. Guinness are going to start to use Maxis e-delivery vans in their range. So we're all familiar with seeing the Guinness van outside pubs in every village in every town in Ireland where the guys are going in to service the, the lines. Well, we're going to start to get familiar with seeing them as Maxis vans now, full electric vans outside those same pubs in all these villages and towns around Ireland. Guinness have said that they want 70% of their fleet zero emissions by 2025. Um, so the move is on to replace all the conventional uh, ice engines in these vans and, and replace them with Maxxis electric vans. If you want to chart transportation and the history of transportation, there's kind of no better company than, than Guinness when you look at it. Guinness goes back to 1759 and 1759 the first form of transport was they had stabling for 12 horses. 1873 there's a jetty built at Victoria Quay to allow barges to access uh, the Liffey. Seven, seven, 1877 there's a rail link put in uh, to Knight, Knightsbridge which became named as Houston then. Uh, 1701 was the first motor vehicle, sorry 1901 was the first motor vehicle and 1913 they owned their own ship to go from Dublin port to the UK. 1951 they have bulk tankers, 1961 they finished using horses and barges, uh, are finished in 1961. 1993 is their last ship, and 2021 is their first zero emissions vehicle. So a complete history of transportation exists there from Guinness. You can just see that the changes occur, and you adapt and you change. 2021, first zero emissions. So the history of transport goes on within Guinness. Thanks for watching and please like, comment and subscribe. Thanks a lot.